Hello? A new Tenkaichi 4 announcement? Let's talk about it. The trailer opens with a cinematic shot of the desert wasteland area. And before we go on with the breakdown, I just had to make a quick comparison here. How long we've come, huh? Also, the game is going to be available on PC. This might not sound surprising to some of you, considering pretty much every single Dragon Ball game is being released on PC nowadays. But during the PS2 and PS3 eras, it was a whole different story. In fact, this is the first Tenkaichi game to ever be officially released on PC. But we're getting sidetracked. Let's get back to the trailer. Goku and Vegeta are knocking each other into these rock formations. And for a few frames, you can see the upper third of this specific rock formation slowly collapse. Now, I find that part particularly interesting, mostly because we've never seen such destruction mechanics. Usually, if you hit any part, the whole formation goes down. I got really curious about this, so I went to check their official site. And… well, would you look at that. Step into an arena that reacts to your every action. As you transform or unleash your most devastating attacks, watch the environment respond with stunning realism. I mean, you can't see it, but I have this huge goofy smile on my face right now. And now we get into some real gameplay. We can see Goku launching Vegeta with sort of a knee kick. And immediately after, he proceeds to teleport behind him. That first part with the knee kick looks identical to Tenkaichi. 3. However, I have no idea how Goku ended up behind Vegeta, considering they cut that part out. I know for sure that you wouldn't be able to find yourself behind the enemy with that combo in Tenkaichi 3. No matter what you try, you always teleport in front of the enemy. Tenkaichi's signature vanishes are also making a comeback. I don't know if they'll be to the same extent as they were in previous games. You could essentially keep on teleporting as long as you had enough key and didn't mess up your timing. Never mind. It looks like it's the same in Tenkaichi 4. They showcase it later during the Vegeta vs Frieza fight. In the next scene, Vegeta fires a Gallic gun at Goku, who proceeds to do a vanish to the right. Again, something you could do in BT3. However, immediately after that, Goku launches a Kamehameha at Vegeta, who deflects the attack with his left hand alone. Now this is something we've never seen in the Tenkaichi series. But we did see it in Raging Blast, another series that's been developed by the same people. People. This particular scene piqued my interest quite a bit. You'll notice throughout the entire trailer that they don't really showcase any of the movement mechanics, which I thought was kind of strange. They only show combat and flashy cutscenes. Nothing wrong with that, but I was really hoping they would show us some of the movement mechanics. The movement mechanics are just as important as the combat. In fact, they could make or break the game. Now, I see two routes they can take. Either they choose the Tenkaichi route and give us movement similar to that game, or they go with the Raging Blast movement. This is my personal opinion. That doesn't mean it's fact. But I would much prefer to see the movement be closer to BT3. Nothing against Raging Blast's movement mechanics. I know some people actually prefer them over BT3s. But me personally, I think Tenkaichi 3's movement flows much smoother. I just checked their official website side again. They said, and I quote, engage in hard pounding high speed 3D battles. And here's the good part, that stay true to the anime and video game series. Judging by everything we've seen and read so far, I think they'll probably be heading for the BT3 route in terms of combat and movement. I mean, they still advertise this game as a new Budokai Tenkaichi. Think it's safe to say that it'll be closer to BT3 than Raging Blast. Goku and Vegeta proceed to transform into blue, with the game showcasing some spectacular graphics and effects. And soon after, a beam clash ensues. Could this possibly signify the return of beam struggles? In the next scene, Frieza is shown throwing his death ball at planet Nemec. And immediately after, the planet slowly begins to implode. But do you know what's really funny? In Tenkaichi 3, this move is literally called Destroy the Planet. And despite having that name, it doesn't do jack sh Anyways, I guess this confirms that destructible stages are back. Although the way they showcase the planet's destruction is slightly different. Usually, they give us a look from space. Following Namek's destruction, Vegeta and Frieza can be seen duking it out on a destroyed version of planet Namek. Nothing special going on in this scene, just a bunch of vanishes going around. But the very next scene... Kakarot... Kakarot!
for the first time ever. We see a Dragon Ball Super character in a Tenkaichi game. Who would have thought this day would ever come? Not me, that's for sure. He even got the eye detail from the movie. We then see a montage of a bunch of DBZ characters, followed by three super characters. Android 17, Bergamo, and Jiren. It honestly... It feels surreal. Witnessing a new Tenkaichi is a trip on its own, but witnessing Dragon Ball Super characters in an official Tenkaichi game, it's just... it's... it's something else. Before I wrap up the video, I just want to mention the fact that they included Mr. Satan. And what's more, he appears to be in his dynamic mess -em up punch pose. Honestly, it felt so surreal to see both him and the pose in such high quality. I'm really glad they included him. He was one of the core parts of the Tenkaichi experience. Just as I was about to finish the video, Shonen Games on Twitter revealed some potentially bad news. According to the PlayStation and Steam pages, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero won't have local multiplayer. Eh, uh, I don't know. Not the biggest fan of that. Although nothing has been confirmed, they might still add it. As someone pointed out in the comments, the recently released Naruto Storm Connections is also showing as single player, while still offering local split screen. Again, nothing is confirmed, we'll just have to wait and see. So yeah, that's gonna be all for this one. Can't wait to see what they show us next. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.